If you're a filmmaker, videographer, or VFX artist like me, one of the things that you're going to run into very, very frequently is noisy, grainy footage. And so today I want to show you the plugin that I use almost every single day at my job in visual effects that I've used on Marvel films, DC films, that is a staple to being able to do high quality work. You can use free alternatives in DaVinci Resolve, like I'm I'm using DaVinci Resolve here, but I'm using DaVinci Studio. But even in the free version, you can do things in the Fusion tab to help reduce noise and grain and clean up your video. There's other tools like Topaz Labs Video AI, which I was actually trying to record this to compare to that tool, but it was really not giving me good results in terms of what I wanted to do with this. I think that tool really shines where you're using old footage that you're upscaling to 4K and it really cleans it up and gives Gives you nice high quality footage but what i'm talking about is working on high-end films or even just you know any kind of video project where you need a lot more fine tuning and control over your image that you can go through and select areas and really get the best out of it so this footage is from a short film i shot last year called the collector you can watch it on this youtube channel here now while the tool we're talking about today is a paid tool i'm going to link in the description below another creator's video that goes through how to do noise reduction completely for free in the free version of DaVinci Resolve so you do not have to spend a penny using the Fusion tab and using the tools in there. So please go check that out if you don't want to spend any money on this. But I do think it's worth looking at what you can achieve with professional tools spending a little bit of money. So the tool in question that I'm talking about today is made by a company called Neat Video. The plugin itself is called Reduce Noise. And this is the industry standard. You can use things like the Red Giant Denoiser and use that in After Effects, and it can do a pretty decent job. But if you go to any high-end visual effects studio, they are using this tool. And it does such an incredible job at cleaning up noisy, flickery footage. These clips that you're seeing here are not hyperbole. This genuinely can do this level of cleanup for you. And I've done it myself many times. Like they're, they're showing it here used on a wedding video. But even if you're just doing like very simple visual effects, like removing a wire is very typical that you do. You wanna use a tool like this to remove any noise, any grain, do your paint work and then reintroduce that noise after so it looks like it was captured in camera without that wire ever existing, for example. Now, as I said, it's a paid tool. It's not crazy expensive. If you compare it again to something like Topaz Labs Video AI, that tool is 300 US dollars, but it does offer other features that this doesn't. This is just a denoising plugin. I got the version for Resolve. Even though I don't do visual effects in Resolve, I do my visual effects in the Foundry's Nuke, which is like a node-based compositing package, but it is a subscription-based compositing package. I wanted a tool that works in DaVinci Resolve where I'm not paying any additional subscriptions or any additional fees. And regardless of what compositing package I'm using, I can always use this tool because I use it for my color grading. If the colors are very, if it's very noisy footage and the colors are kind of flickering when I'm adding my grade, I'll denoise it using this tool and then I'm good to go. Or as I said, with the VFX example, I can render out my denoise plates in Resolve, take it into my compositing package of choice, work on it, and then bring the final composite back to Resolve and put into my edit. So this price, it's $100, that's US prices. This is a limited version where it only goes up to 1080p, so HD, and you're not supposed to use it for commercial projects. So I do client work, so this doesn't really work for me, and I shoot a lot of my videos in 4K, or 6K on the red Komodo. So the resolution limit is not gonna cut it for me. So I ended up buying it at the pro version, which is 180 US dollars. But as I said, I use this almost every single day. So in my opinion, it is worth it. But for you, that might not be justifiable. If you're just cleaning up some footage here or there, very infrequently, you may wanna find other cheaper alternatives, as I said in that video that I linked below. So the clips I'm using are from a short film that I shot last year. And this on the left is essentially 
the footage straight out of the red camera. I've applied a LUT to it using Film Convert Nitrate to make it look Rec. 709 so it's a little bit more representative of the final image but you can see it's not very noisy footage this is typical of what you would see on a movie or a tv show where everything will still have some noise and some grain but it's not glaringly obvious this is very clean footage this is 6k rendered out at 4k so it's down sampled very very clean so to really exaggerate this because in the short film, I was doing a VFX shot that comes right after this, but I don't want to spoil the film, but it's the same angle, same everything, same actor. And so what I did was I exposed the shot up two stops so that you can really see more of that grain. It might not read through on this full frame shot, but I'll take you into the color tab and we'll zoom in and hopefully you can really see how much grain and noise there is there. Again, boosted two stops. This is still very, very clean by any other metric. But for this example, we're going to say that this is how we got the footage and it's very noisy. So I'm going to start off. I'm just going to zoom in here so when we come back, we can really see the difference. But I have the tool here. As I said, the company is called Neat Video, but the tool is called Reduce Noise. I'm going to add a new node and drag this on. And this tool here will work the same way in every single program that you open it. It will have this prepare noise and adjust the filter settings. So we're gonna hit prepare noise profile, hit progressive. You can have that not show up, but if you ever work with interlaced footage, you might want that pop up to come up so it knows how, what it's dealing with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit auto profile. So what that's doing is it's analyzing the footage here and finding an area that is a good representation of the noise that it's seeing in the footage. I'm in the advanced mode right now and this is giving me all these extra options. If you do use reduced noise or neat video, I recommend you switch it to advanced mode. It really is worth learning how these tools work rather than just relying on a on a one-click solution because you will get so much more quality out of them. So this is what it's determined is a good starting point. Now you'll notice if I zoom in, the noise is still here. And that's because you need to go to this tab here, adjust and preview. And now we can see the result of its selection. So as I click and drag, it shows me the original image and then I let go it shows me the final result. And it's not too bad. It's still a little soft, I would say. A little bit too much detail is being lost, especially around the eyes. If you look here, there's a couple of little lines here that I kind of got lost. It's ever so slightly soft here, so we're losing some of that eyelash detail. So we want to try and bring that back, and again, on the eyebrow as well. So I'm going to go back to the Prepare Noise Profile tab, so we're seeing the original. And what I'm going to do is look around and start trying to select areas that are flat and even in terms of lighting and texture. You don't want to select areas that have a lot of texture because it's going to read that as noise and try and remove it. So if I, for example, went to Danica's forehead here, you can see there's a lot of noise from the sensor, but there's also skin detail, right? There's all these fine lines that you can see here. And there's also like peach fuzz and like her detail that it's going to interpret as noise and then it's gonna remove it and make the image look blurry. And what all we're trying to do is remove the noise and keep the detail. So I'm finding areas like this where it's very flat and consistent. Again, also not using clothes which have a lot of detail and texture because it's gonna interpret those as noise. So we wanna find areas that are very flat and consistent. Like if I do this, for example, it will give me a warning saying non, not uniform Y. Y being the luminance channel because you've got dark and you've got light and it's using the luminance channel to determine where it's sampling from. So I'll select this area here, and then over on the, again, on the advanced mode, over here, you can actually start refining your selection. So this is from the auto profile, I've not changed anything, and I have selected this area, and you can see here these little dots have lit up, and that's the area of the image in terms of this scale from dark to light, where those color channels sit, the red, the green, and the blue. And if I click manual fine tune, you'll see that it will actually change this curve on all of the color channels. Sometimes it won't if you've already sampled an area that's very similar. It's not going to change those, but it will adjust and refine itself based on these little selections. So, you know, if you don't use the auto profile, if you want it to start over, you want to try and find an area that is very even and consistent, that is a good representation of the noise, especially trying to get a green box like this. If a red box like this, it's just, it there's not enough information for it to get any info from. A yellow box means it's okay. It's like a good-ish amount, like it's a small sample. You don't really want to build your profile from that, but when you're doing this like little refinement process, that's totally fine because it's already got its 
base profile set up with this green square, you want to build from that. So if you wanted to do it and you wanted to do an auto profile, you absolutely can. So I'm gonna hit that again. It's chosen the same spot. Or I can select my area like this and build my profile from that, which is a much larger area than it auto detected and will give you a slightly different result, but it might give you a better result. So I'm gonna go through and select little small areas. So again, that's not enough. So we'll find somewhere over here, hit this manual refine. Didn't really change anything here where there's like, it's a little flatter, a little bit more even. Yeah, so there it, it kind of tweaked these areas here. And you're just trying to, as I said, build this little profile and get the best results that you can. I'm not gonna spend much more time on this, but you can see we've brought a little bit more of that detail back than we had before. And we're just removing the noise without really losing any of the texture. And that's the key. That's the goal that we're working towards. Now, neat video, reduce noise is a heavy tool. If you are gonna use it, I highly recommend that once you've done your denoise you render that result out and then re-import it back in whether you're doing visual effects on it whether you're just editing and you're going to do color grading whatever it might be because if you're applying this on every single clip it's going to really bog down your computer use up a lot of memory and slow the whole process down and even when you're rendering and exporting it's processing this as a live tool and it's very heavy and your renders will take a long time so i'm going to hit apply and now if we look in here I just turn this off so we get a little bit more space. We can compare the before and after pretty easily. So this is before, after. And you can see it is heavy. Like, look how long it takes to enable like that. But it's done a great job. And that way I can now take this shot over to my compositing package, start doing the work, do the paint, do the cleanup, whatever. Let's say I want to remove this thing here. I can take that out and then I can reapply my grain, bring it back into my edit and finish it and it gives me a great result. This isn't an extreme example of what this tool can really do. I wanted to show something that is a little bit more every day. So as I said, you might wanna use this for color grading. So if we go in and wanna select like the skin tone, let's say, and then we go here, not the best, <laughs> but you can see that it's very, very noisy on that selection. I've, de I've uh, disabled the reduced noise here. So we're keying essentially the raw file which is very noisy and you can see it's kind of jittering the whole way through. If we then enable the D the denoise plugin, give it a second. It's a lot smoother in terms of what it's selecting. Is it perfect? No, but here you can see it's a lot heavier to scroll through, but the selection is a lot more consistent frame to frame. So again, you want to make sure that you are exporting your denoise and then bringing it back in before you're doing things like this, because it can be, very slow and very taxing on the resource of your computer. I'm using a Mac mini M2, like it's nothing to write home about, but it is still, you know, a very capable machine, but this will add a lot of heft to your color grading process or your VFX process. So keep that in mind. But yeah, as I said, this is a little bit more of an indicative way in which you might use it beyond just the extreme examples of fixing broken footage or noisy underexposed footage but actually to enhance the quality of your work, even if you shoot things really well or working with really high quality footage. As I said, every film that I've worked on, big films, indie films, TV shows, everything that I've ever worked on, I've used this tool on regardless of what it was because I'm adding visual effects to things, I'm doing paint work, I'm adding CG work, I'm doing green screen, even to improve the quality of your green screen king, denoise it first. Work on denoised footage and then do all your visual effects and then add the grain back on or the noise back on. After, you will end up with much better results. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this overview of this tool. I didn't really go into the nitty gritty details of how every single setting works or anything. because I think that it's something that you need to really discover on your own, but try it out. There is a demo version. I highly recommend it. I uh, use, as I said, use it every day on high end movies down to any TV show, music videos, my own short films. It helps with color grading. It helps with visual effects. And if you have really, really broken footage that is super underexposed or noisy or grainy or whatever it might be, it could really, really help. I recommend spending the time to learn all of the ins and outs, but I just wanted to show how I use this tool and why I think it's a great tool that is worth the money. And as I said at the beginning, I bought it for my editing software because I will always have access to DaVinci Resolve rather than a paid subscription 
option, even with Adobe or wherever it might be, I will always have access to this tool. It is not a lost plugin once I stop paying for those other software applications. So you will have it for a very, very long time and on it will work on any machine that you have. I hope that you found this useful and interesting and maybe you'll give it a try. I'll link to the plugin itself in the description. And as I said, I'll link to the free alternative video using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. But that's it for now. Thank you so much and I'll catch you in the next one.